The next talk is by John Evans, and it's t entitled The Societal Impact and Social Ethics of Science, Technology, and Medicine. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, you'll be getting the, uh, not the ethical analysis here, but I'm the chair of the Department of Sociology, so you're getting the social institutional analysis of a uh, similar problem. And the proposed initiative here I'm talking about is not yet fully designed. And the initiative will be a bit unusual in that it was invented when I was part of a strategic planning working group discussing the challenges facing the university and the direction we wanted to go in. So it's born of a discussion of the challenges of the university. And I've been discussing this with a number of people across campus, Larry Goldstein from the Stem Cell Center, Craig, who you just met, Seth Lair, Humanities, Bob Friedman from the Venture Institute, Mike Kalkman of the Center for Ethics and Science and Technology. And the specifics of the vision I put forward here, I will say are largely my own. I don't want to, uh, you to blame the others who I've been discussing with, and we'll hopefully we'll put together something a bit more coherent, uh, a more fully developed uh, vision in the future. The initiative is the Societal Impact of Social Ethics of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Medicine. This will be something like a research center that facilitates conversations and collaborations among academics in researching the impact and ethics of science. So why should UCSD invest in something like this? Well, we're, I've been told we're the fifth largest recipient of research grants in the US. And this knowledge, technical innovations, all have impacts on society, some more than others, of course. But we could ask just some brief questions. Craig talked about some. Should geoengineers spray particles into the atmosphere to combat global warming? Should we inject experimental stem cells into a person with this type of disease? If you gather genomic information about someone, should someone else tell them in five years if we discover the gene for X and they happen to have it? Every scientist on campus can come up with some questions like this from their own field of inquiry. UCSD creates all this knowledge, all this technology, all this medical innovation, but tends to leave it to other institutions to figure out the impact and ethics. But the impact and ethics of innovation discovery cannot just be left to others. To take an example of this, the federal government's Human Genome Project put aside a portion of its funding for research into the social, ethical, and legal implications of the Human Genome Project because it was known that otherwise these issues weren't going to be properly examined. Yes, UCSD has all the legally required regulatory ethics entities like IRBs, escrow committees, animal welfare committees, and so on. And yes, colleagues like Mike Kalikman and Mary Devereaux have engaged in public outreach and a workshop on biomedical ethics exists in the medical school. Yes, there are individual faculty involved in research, and I've been meeting them more and more every day as I put this uh, forward. But by and large, compared to other institutions of its stature, UCSD does not examine the social impact or ethics of its own intellectual activity. So UCSD has an opportunity here to create a truly innovative approach to analyzing its own scientific activity through investing in and organizing all the disparate people already here who have interests in the era. It would be a fairly unique contribution. So I thought of this initiative as a challenge. It's actually relatively easy from a sociology of knowledge perspective uh, to create a cross VC initiative as long as you stay within the same intellectual tradition. So for example, someone in the Central Campus Biology Department can create an initiative with scholars in the med school because everyone speaks the same language, thinks many of the same issues are important, and use similar standards of evaluation. The initiative I'm thinking about here was to get faculty talking across what I consider to be the true Gilman Drive divide, which is based on a number of subtle issues that I'll discuss in a minute. This is, a, for those of you familiar with this, it's the cousin of C.P. Snow's two cultures argument. The initiative would ideally bring together textual-based philosophers, inductive, interpretive social scientists, positivistic social scientists, historians, lab-based natural scientists, practitioners of science, technology, and medicine, all into the same enterprise. Now, many colleagues here, maybe not in this room, but on campus, do not know that the social sciences and humanities on central campus have an unusually strong focus on the study of science, medicine, and technology. For example, the philosophy, sociology, history, and communication departments are unusually focused in this area. So let's experiment together in creating an initiative that puts all these pieces together, makes us work as a unified university in its classical sense, 
and properly examine the impact and ethics of our own activity. So let me talk about this broader vision here. Uh, this is just for the investigation of ethical issues I could do if I had time, the same uh, presentation for impact. For simplicity, I'm going to create two dimensions. The y-axis is abstraction. On one end, abstraction, basic and theoretical knowledge. On the other, applied and practical application. This is sort of analogous to the basic applied research continuum that people talk about in STEM fields. On the x-axis is social, public, and on the other, individual. American bioethics is dominated by an individualist perspective, so why care about the social public end of things? And there are two reasons. First, one is that including many so the social level in any analysis is the most intellectually defensible, which you expect me to say coming from the social science division. The second is, if you look at UCSD's strategic plan, we have defined ourselves first and foremost as a public university. And as a public university, we have an obligation to discuss the concerns and perspectives of the public. Hopefully you can see that. What existing fields of knowledge map onto this grid? So as an example, let's consider four research area in the field that's now called bioethics. So the lower right, we have clinical ethics and research ethics. Is this protocol ethical? On the lower left, public policy bioethics. What should the social policy in general be on biomedical ethics issue X? And at the more abstract social level, what I call cultural bioethics, is engaging in technology X ethical according to cultural tradition Y? If you're a Kantian, you know, is this ethical? Let's take an example of specific ethical questions from stem cell research. Should we conduct an experiment putting stem cells into Mr. Jones, who's right over there? Okay, that's individual and very pragmatic. Is the consent form Mr. Jones signed truly informative? That's the more social, or the more abstract question in the individual end. On the applied social, what does the public think about putting stem cells into people? And how do we incorporate that into the more individual knowledge? And finally, what does regenerative medicine mean in the first place? And what's the purpose of medicine? So we could do this with uh, climate change. What's the actual risk to individuals from geoengineering? Does the public want to follow the precautionary principle in geoengineering experiments or something else? Should we be Kantians, utilitarians, or something else in terms of planetary-wide experiments? And I could obviously go on and on uh, with this, but I will stop. So <laughs> these distinctions map into areas already engaged by faculty at UCSD, albeit somewhat separately and not through communication. So there's clinical ethics in hospitals, ethics of research in human subjects, and in the individual end, there's sociology in bioethics, medical sociology over there, sociology of bioethics, sociology of values, the anthropology of morality. And at, you know, forgive me for, you know, imperialistically placing people in these boxes, but I'm putting philosophy, sociology, history, and anthropology of science in this upper uh, left-hand quadrant. So obviously the point here is to have conversations not within each box, but across the boxes. For example, whether Mr. Jones consents to the stem cell experiment is partially dependent on what the informed consent form looks like, which has to reflect general social attitudes about medical experimentation, and at the most abstract, what it means to regenerate the body in the Western cultural tradition, or what it means to consent to anything in a liberal, liberal democratic society. The, now, I will say there are challenges, and I want to raise them for us here. One is that the social sciences and humanities tend to engage in meta-critique, and other par parts of the university less so. Another is the challenge of working across epistemic traditions. There's also a theoretical versus applied tension within the social science and humanities. More critical is funding. The activity in the lower right-hand cell is fairly fundable. This could be a profit center for the university to be crass. The activity in the upper left-hand cell is very difficult to obtain external funding for, not that people don't try. So to be clear, there would have to be some sort of cross-subsidization uh, going on for this to work. Finally, since we're out of time, what's the benefits? Well, first, a more rich version of the implications and ethics that integrates the social to the individual from the abstract to the pragmatic. There are a lot of universities that have big investments in the lower right-hand corner. You go to almost all biomedical ethics centers, it's all in the right, lower right-hand corner. People have not in invested in integrated vision. This could be UCSD's brand, so to speak. And implications in ethics uh, that would 
also integrate the public's views given that we are a public university. And finally, it is sort of an experimental vehicle for overcoming the Gilman Drive divide that could hopefully be used in other aspects of knowledge as well. Thank you very much.